So in this episode, we're going to talk about installing a local server on your computer. And this is something we need to have when we do want to write PHP code. Because like I said in the last episode, PHP is a server-side language, meaning if you don't have a server running, it won't actually work inside the browser. Now, installing a server on your computer is quite easy to do. And it's really quick to do, it's free, and you don't need to worry about it harming your computer in any kind of way. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to download a software called XAMPP. Now, there's quite a few programs out there you can use to install a server. I like using the one called XAMPP, and I know a lot of other people do like it. And it's available for both Windows, Linux, and Mac. So for this episode, I'm going to focus on XAMPP. So we're going to open up our browser. We're going to go to Google, and you're going to search for XAMPP. And the first link would probably be the one going to apachefriends.org. So you're going to go ahead and click it. And in here, you can see we can download for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So once you download it and install it, do notice where you do install it because you're going to have to remember that for later. But once you do have it installed, you can actually go to your you know, C drive or D drive, wherever you did actually install it, and find a folder called XAMPP. So once you have XAMPP found, I want you to go into it. And notice we do actually have XAMPControl.exe. If I click it and run it, you can see we get this little window here running. Now, this is what you can use to actually run your server. And you do actually have it installed right now. Once you do install the program called XAMPP, you will have the server installed on your computer. So in order to actually get the server running, we're going to have to activate Apache and MySQL. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start on both of these. And now this should be running. So if we go to our browser again, go to the URL, and you type localhost backslash PHP my admin. It should actually actually take it to the what do you call it your local host where you can see all the different databases we have installed on our server. So in my case, I do actually have a couple of them, and this is actually a fairly clean new installation of XAMPP, so I don't have a lot of databases right now. But we can actually go ahead and click on databases up here in the top left corner and create a database. So you can actually see we can just write something, create. And I do actually apologize, minus in Danish. Uh, the button should, should be the same places, just in English, of course. Um, but as you can see, I did actually just install a database or set up a database called SADAD, which was just gibberish I wrote in here. Now, databases we use inside PHP to store data. For example, when you create maybe a login system, in order to have a login system, you also need to have users. And when users sign up, they need to be saved somewhere. So we can actually you know, go in and check if the username and password matches each other and that sort of thing. So we need to have a database where we can save all kinds of information. And this is actually what we have running right here. Now, in order to just write PHP code, you don't need to do anything inside PHP My Admin. All you need to do to get PHP code running or like working is to open up XAMPP, the control panel here, and start these two buttons. Once you have these two started, your PHP code is going to work. So we won't actually have to touch PHP My Admin before we actually need to use databases, which is not right now. So once we have these running, what you need to do is you need to go back into where you installed XAMPP. And inside the XAMPP folder, you're going to look for the folder called htdocs. You're going to open it up. And in here, you can see I have a couple of folders. And this is actually my folders. I created these. You're most likely going to have some random gibberish in here, like some, some random files, uh, which XM installs as a default when you do actually install it for the first time. Now, what I want you to do is highlight all the files you have in here and delete them. Once you deleted all of them, I want you to right click and create a new folder. Now, this new folder is going to be the root folder for your website, meaning that this is where we're going to save all the files for our website. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here called PHP Lessons, which is going to be my folder. You guys can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and create PHP Lessons and go in here. So now we can actually start saving all kinds of PHP code. And I do actually want to show you guys a little example of why we need to install a local server. If I were to go and open up a new document, this is a completely clean document. I did not save it or do anything to this one yet. If I start up writing PHP code, which by the way is inside PHP tags like this, 
we'll talk about that in the next couple of episodes. And if I were to echo out something, which basically means that I want to write something on the screen, I'm going to write echo. I'm going to write, hi there, or hew there. I'm going to save this one inside the folder we just created. So I'm going to go inside my htdocs folder. Now, just a little tip for you guys. I did actually save my htdocs folder on the side here inside my Explorer tab. It's quite, you're going to be using it quite often if you do a lot of web development. So I recommend you guys save it over here in the side as well. So if I go ahead and save this file I just created inside my PHP lessons root folder, I say index.php because we do have the PHP extension, save it. You guys will notice when I do actually go into my browser, go up into my URL and type localhost backslash, and then the name of the folder we just created. So in my case, it was PHP lessons. You'll notice that I get some text writing. Now, if I were to actually turn off my control panel and stop these servers and refresh my browser, we'll just wait for it to load. You guys will see we have no web page available. And this is why we need to have a server running because right now we can't actually get it running. If I were to actually take this document and just run it inside my browser by right, -click on it, right clicking on it and opening with my Google Chrome, I can see it doesn't choose it as a default here. Okay, so I did actually need to go find my Google Chrome for some reason, but I do have it here now. And you guys will actually notice when I do open it inside Google Chrome, just by right clicking on the file, we get the PHP code right here. So it doesn't actually write out hi there, like just hi there. You can actually see the entire code here. And that's because we don't have a server running. So we do actually need to go start the servers and open it inside our htdocs folder because that's connected to our server. And you guys will see we have the text there. So you need to have a server running every time you do PHP code, meaning that if you have a website that has PHP code in it, you're gonna have to use it inside the local host. Now you might be asking, well, what about when we get it online? Once you do get your website online, I'd show you guys how to get a server or at least a database running on your server because you will have a server automatically when you upload to an online uh, hosting company. So I'll show you guys how to set up a database at some point inside a hosting company if you want to. So right now you guys can see I did actually write out hi there and it's working. So that's basically all we needed. Uh, I do want to show you guys one last thing, which is if I don't write localhost, or don't write anything behind localhost, you guys can see we get to this place here where we can see all the different folders we have inside our htdocs folder. As you guys will see, if I go back into my htdocs, these are the same folders as I have in here. So if you don't wanna write anything behind localhost, you can actually just go in here and click PHP lessons. And it opens up again. So this is how we install a local server. And this is all we need to actually get started on PHP. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys next time.